Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Vega here from Serpent X Special Forces. And once again, we are looking at the Acer Predator Helios 300. I already did a performance review of this laptop, but today we're going to be focusing on the thermals. Now, by no means should you have to do this to your uh, Helios 300 laptop. Uh, this is the 2019 generation because Acer did a great job of maintaining the thermals on this laptop. Compared to other gaming uh, products out there, this laptop does a great job of keeping the CPU and GPU in check, no problem. So in this video, you're gonna see the teardown of the laptop, a couple of issues that I bumped into. We first started off with Thermal Grizzly's Cryonaut, replacing the stock thermal paste uh, on both the GPU and CPU with that, but then later switched over to Conductonaut, which is liquid metal. Now, a lot of people may frown upon that. Uh, realistically, using liquid metal on your laptop is not really necessary, but I went ahead and did it anyways, and I'm gonna showcase the different results, uh, switching from stock to cryonaut to liquid metal all in my data and then you can make an informed decision on whether or not you want to even do this to your acer laptop so let me show you what i've been through uh because this had to take place over a couple of days a couple of issues i bumped into and then we'll wrap up with my overall thoughts guys so now we got the liquid metal um, applied to the GPU and CPU I showed you that application process as well as replace the thermal putty that comes with this particular laptop it's 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 some type of pink pliable uh, putty I, I'm, I'm guessing as many UK use cases for it but once you take apart this laptop for the first time and you remove the cooling uh, assembly so to speak you're going to rep up that putty and to me it may it may not be a, an impact whatsoever but to me since we now broke that that contact patch and it was kind of ripped up and, and pieces missing I didn't feel comfortable unfortunately there's no thermal sensors on this particular laptop but 
just the fact that I replaced it with some good thermal pads uh, it will kind of give me peace of mind. So let me go ahead and start uh, testing with the liquid metal now on and then we'll wrap up the video with the overall performance. We shouldn't get much but just enough to sustain clocks uh, at you know higher temperatures will be uh, adequate in my eyes. So let's see what we get. All right, guys, so as you can see, really when we jump from cryonaut to conductonaut on the GPU side, we didn't see too much of a significant gain. And there's a reason for that. So in a laptop, because we have a compact form factor, the cooler design can only be so big. And because it only has so much surface area, we can only absorb so much heat and dissipate so much heat. Even with the fans running at turbo, uh, we weren't seeing as significant a decrease in temperatures as we would on the CPU or GPU. Now, my recommendation with this laptop is maybe not running a, the turbo fans because that can be quite annoying, but cool boost will ramp the fans up a little bit above the normal auto, depending on the workload and the temperatures it's reading. The biggest con, though, is going to be the memory modules. The memory modules is does not have thermal sensors. So you're not able to tell what the temperatures are on those modules. And that was a little bit annoying slash worrisome for me. I'm sure the temperatures were just fine with the thermal putty. That's why Acer designed it the way they did, but I did replace it. And when I replaced it, I used 0.5 millimeter thermal pads. And by the way, everything that I, I, I used in this video will have be, be linked in the description below. If you wanna see the thermal pads, uh, the cryo knot, conductor knot, whatever. But the biggest improvement that I got out of this entire project is fans. The fans aren't ramping up as loud. They're not as annoying. Uh, we're, we're able to dissipate the heat. Temperatures are in check. We're able to sustain clocks. That was the biggest important uh, project or, or, or goal out of this project. 
was to sustain frequency. Now we're supposed to have all core four gigahertz, but sometimes depending on the game or the workload, I was seeing it drop down to 3.5, 3.6, 3.7 because of thermal throttling. The laptop does a great job stock. You don't really need to do this, but if you wanna get that extra edge or thermal headroom, I would recommend instead of going with liquid metal, go with regular thermal paste, whether it's cryonaut or whatever your favorite is, because it would do the job just fine. But just know once you break that contact patch between a the thermal putty, memory modules, and heatsink, you may want to replace it with something else. You could even use cryonaut, which is non-conductive, to bridge the gap between the heatsink and memory modules, but don't just squeeze a big lob on there. Uh, you, you obviously want to do it within reason. So hopefully this helps you make a decision on whether or not uh, this is something you want to look into. It does improve the thermals. It does reduce the noise output. But it is a task that you're going to have to undertake. So if you got any useful information on this video or you just like teardowns, do me a favor, hit the like button. Subscribe for additional content just like this. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Comment, let me know what your thoughts as well. I'll see you guys.